Hi, I'm Quantic Dave, a senior software engineer with a decade of experience working with other senior and junior scientists, engineers, and developers. Today, I'm going to talk to you about the titanic pay gap between the junior and senior engineers. I will mainly focus on software engineering, but it also applies to engineering in general. I will give you tips on how much you should expect to be compensated and how you can compare yourself to the others. As an example, a junior engineer fresh out of college with an unrelated diploma like science, math, or industrial engineering can score a 100k position in a Silicon Valley company, while a senior engineer with a decade-long successful career will score 500k or much more. Now what are the reasons for this huge gap? Is it only years? Let us investigate. First things first, how much do engineers get paid? Let me show you some data from various sources. First thing to note is that the charts display the total compensation, which includes salary, bonus, and stock options. As you can see, the pay scale gets progressively higher. When you reach the higher mid-tier, you stand around half a million dollars. Top tiers are reserved for specialized positions, and your income will almost entirely be stock options and bonuses, and it will be open-ended. Check out the video description below to get a list of websites that host up-to-date compensation charts for many positions in different companies. Let us say you are a senior software engineer with 10 plus years of experience, with great publications, projects, provable record of accomplishments, and good references. As you just saw on the charts, if you want to work for a Silicon Valley company, you should expect around half a million dollars on average. However, do not forget, before assuming your income based on the resources that are provided, compare your projects, accomplishments, references, and publications to others. Also, do not forget to factor in the location. It will make a huge difference on your expected income and the cost of living, especially if you have a family. If you continue to execute successfully, you should expect to get significant increases in your compensation based on the internal and external opportunities. As you can see in the comparison sites, the compensation of people in Silicon Valley is roughly double that of everywhere else. Now, why is that? The primary reason for this is the people living in it and their competitive edge. So, what makes them so competitive? You will learn throughout this video. Now, let's start by investigating the reasons as to why senior costs a lot. Remember, not everyone has all the traits that I'm going to talk about, but each and every one of them helps a lot. First and foremost, successful engineers are competitive. Having a competitive mindset with the appropriate tool set and skills will eventually get you what you want. Competitive people persist until they reach success. Be it creating a product or going to 100 plus interviews to get the compensation that they ask for. You need to believe that you are worth a certain amount and you should be ready to turn down any offer under that. To get your word, you might have to do a hundred interviews. While doing those interviews, also do networking through your connections. Join conferences to build those connections, be on social media, make blog posts, create publications, and get involved in open source. These are all bonus points, and they will help you connect with more people. Senior engineers have leverage. Senior people generally have multiple sources of income side businesses, investments, real estate, stakes in other businesses. Being economically independent is a huge leverage. Working for less than what you are already making from your other ventures does not make sense. During the interview, you can clearly signal the HR that you will not accept any offer below a certain point, as it doesn't make any economical sense for you. The key is not to need money, or at least give the impression of so you won't have to negotiate from a needy perspective. Also, remember, when HR people manage to hire you for cheap, they get a bonus for doing that. So they will try to drag you down if they sense that you cannot say no to an offer that they make. List your projects and the revenue that they generate on your CV. This will give a powerful message on your financial expectations while applying for a job. Seniors have much more to show. They have personal, corporate and open source projects 
that they can demonstrate. They have personal connections and references that can vouch for them. Obviously, having a recognized portfolio of publications help a lot. Also, having other industry recognitions like awards, fellowships, etc. will help monumentally. All of these make your hand stronger so you can negotiate better. However, presenting your achievements properly is of utmost importance. I will have a separate video on how to present yourself and your achievements. So sub if you want to watch it when it's out. Senior people tend to have better product sense. Thinking with an engineering sense is good enough and not everyone is a product person. But at least some people develop product sense over the years and even move on to product management fields. Being involved in a full product development cycle many times over helps you understand what customers might want or need. I will also have a separate video on product development in tech field. Sub if you don't want to miss it out. Seniors are conscious about their current work and the market. Being in the industry for a longer time makes you aware of the current market and supply demand situations. Constant networking and communication keeps you up to date with your current standing against your competitors in the field. And finally, the senior you get, the keener you become on the business aspect of engineering. Being closer to the money and being interested in money enables you to chase it better. Senior engineers are conscious about their productivity and the value that they generate. They are also conscious about the fact that the value that they generate in a company stays in the company. Hence, they ask to be compensated accordingly. Most companies choose to compensate seniors with stocks and stock options. This is to ensure that they get some of the value back. This also gives them the liability and the direct influence on the outcome of the project and their compensation. It is also generally cheaper for companies to hand out stocks instead of cash. Seniors are generally better at presenting ideas, sharing information, and mentoring juniors. Any new brain that you mentor is a huge value for the company you work for. You might get a better offer and be gone one day, but the people you trained will stay and carry on the business. Passing ideas and information down the line helps everyone, which is also a huge value for the business. Obviously, experience counts. Seniors can get the same thing done in much less time. Here's why. If they did a task like the one in hand a million times before, they will reapply their knowledge and adapt if necessary. Personally, as a senior myself, I'm having a much better time compared to my junior years. Literally, everything gets easier the senior you become. If they need to research and learn, their previous experiences make it far easier for them, and they are more likely to deliver results. Having failed a lot is an immense facilitator for success. How do I know? Because of my own failures. Having completed and scaled a lot of projects is also an immense facilitator for success. Again, how do I know? From my personal achievements in the field. Here's a personal anecdote. On a project that I worked on, our juniors struggled for about a month to create multiple instances of our .NET c -sharp services in a memory-constrained environment. Since .NET and c -sharp combo is not commonly used in scalable systems, they couldn't find much resources online. Then I came in and I educated them on .NET application domains and strategies for sharing runtime resources and memory and wrapped up the project in about two days. This is the kind of difference that experience can make, especially in niches like this. Seniors generally have some form of management experience. A decent percentage of them will have done some form of team leadership. They will play a role in hiring people and offloading some of the work. They will take initiatives and will not wait for a product manager to micromanage them. They will know how to play ball with the upper management. And again, they will help mentor other people, even fellow seniors. As I said, this is a huge value for the business. In many tech companies, engineers can make more money than their managers. Silicon Valley companies have been offering ways of vast compensation increases 
without switching to management tracks. Since not everyone has a desire to be a manager, it is important not to lose tech talent that contributes to technical matters greatly. Accountability. The seniors are held accountable for the success and failure of their projects. If they are team leads, they are also held accountable for the success and failure of their teams. This generally does not apply to juniors, and it is generally written off as a learning experience. The game of diminishing returns applies to engineering also. As people grow, their expectations grow even further. However, taxes and other new expenses like kids hold them back. As a result, seniors expect a high return on their time investment in any business. If you want this video to reach fellow engineers and developers, give it a thumbs up. Search engines like Google tend to favor content that is highly favored by the audience. Let us continue by exploring why juniors get paid less. I will not go into much detail, but here are the top points based on my experiences in my junior years. Most senior and junior engineer interactions are based on mentorship. Juniors tend to bombard seniors with questions based on tech and tooling related topics, which takes a huge chunk of time from seniors. As a result, effective cost of employing juniors ends up being much higher. Juniors generally concentrate on the technology aspect of things and not the products. This might be the correct choice if you do not intend to become a product person. Technology experts have their places in the field and they are compensated generously for it. Juniors generally act on opportunities presented to them rather than creating the opportunities. This again is acceptable as if you do not know the market, you can end up making a terrible decision in the name of chasing what you see as an opportunity. For instance, I personally witnessed a ton of juniors resigning from their posts in big tech companies to pursue positions in startups in a game of blind luck. They blissfully ignore the opportunity cost of leaving their big tech career behind while doing their math. When it comes to seeking high returns on your time investment in your career, stay calm and collected. Be it during networking, job interviews, or else. If you cannot get what you expect, keep trying. If you get more than what you expect, keep it cool. It is all about that blue steel, baby. Blue steel.